Welcome back to Spank Ranch Garage. I'm in the middle of a build on this 18 horsepower Honda V-Twin. It's just for a piece of equipment, nothing fancy, nothing really cool. And I've hit a really fatal snag. I'm rebuilding this engine from a connecting rod failure. Uh, so here's one of the broken rods. There was one good rod left and I ordered some replacements from China because the actual rods from Honda, I think were like $130 each and like an eight day lead time. I was able to get the Chinese ones, $55 for the pair uh, here in like three days. And of course I'm in a time crunch. I'm supposed to have this thing built back on the piece of equipment and traveling with it in four days. Knowing how my life goes, nothing is ever smooth and we have a huge problem, which I didn't realize until I actually started to assemble the engine. The replacement Chinese connecting rods are too short. So I started to rebuild this thing and I was like, damn, that piston's really set in there, you know, at top dead center. And I was kind of like giggling to myself, like, oh, I wonder if the rods I bought are too short. And I was like, man, maybe they are too short. And pretty soon that horrible feeling started to become more of a reality. Uh, you can see here, Chinese rod on the bottom, Honda rod on the top. We've got a pretty substantial distance. So what is the plan here? Well, my plan is to actually fill the top side of this rod with weld and then offset bore the rod cap to make up the difference here. And there's actually two challenges that come with that. One, I need to find that arbitrary center and bore it to the correct length between wrist pin and crank pin. But two, you'll see that you know we've got this split split cap here. And what happens is if I were to, you know, leave this parting line between the rod and the rod cap where it is, and then I bore this out in a different location and weld it up, you'd actually end up with, you know, 55% of the circle on one side of the parting line and 45% of the circle on the other side of the parting line. And that part with 55% of the circle actually won't be able to fit back over the crank journal. You know, take this as a factory connecting rod. You've got exactly 180 degrees of circle on each part here. That way they, they come right off the crankshaft. Now let's say we left the rod cap where it was and just moved the bore to the right. You'd now end up with a partial circle over here and then more than half of a circle over here. So think about the logistics of getting this onto the crankshaft. You'd have to hammer this thing on and hope that it, the cap spreads a little and then snaps back and it's just not the way to do it. So when you're relocating the crankshaft bore in the rod, you need to move the parting line for the cap as well. I, I don't see another way around it. So this is definitely pretty annoying, pretty discouraging that I even need to go down this path because I'm kind of doing this in an emergency. Uh, you know, if I was doing this for my pleasure or to build like a custom car or like something cool, that'd be you know, a little more enjoyable. But on the flip side, I guess it's cool to like learn this crap on an 18 horsepower engine because, uh, you know, the thing only spins 3,600 RPMs and makes, you know, 18 horsepower. So it's not like a super uh, tremendous racing application here. You can probably get away with a little more. Even at this point, if I ordered the rods from Honda, and expedited the shipping, I'd still be really pinched on this because I have to have this done in a couple days. Two or three days shipping does not allow me enough time to build this engine, get it on the piece of equipment, get it tested, figured out, and hit the road. So we are just going to work with what we have here. I think we have everything we need to physically do this job. So with both of these rods having different, I'll call it a cap break angle, meaning that the angle that the cap bolts on in relation to the angle of the shaft is different. So right now I have just visually the cap brake angles are lined up, but you can tell that rod is way offset. That's gonna make it challenging to measure distance and to do this correctly because the move that I have to make has to be parallel to the rod brake angle. So it's gotta be this way out but that, you know, moving 2.5 millimeters this way does not actually increase our rod length by 2.5 millimeters. So there's gonna be some math involved depending on that rod break angle. Very close. Okay, 
So we have the rod now, the rod cap break is now parallel with our table. So then, because I know the diameter, or I know the distance between the center of the wrist pin and the center of the main bearing, if I now identify these centers and read them on the DRO, I can then plot that on a circle and determine the angle off the horizon that this cap is at. Then once I know that, I can then draw a circle with my new radius, which is the correct rod, right? The Honda GX610 rod, which should have a 117 and a half millimeter target. I can draw that new radius, drop the same angle from my horizon here that we calculate here, and then that should give me the center point to bore on. All right, so I worked the math on this. We know, we, we figured out our center to center being 115 millimeters, and we know that we need to change that to 117 and a half millimeters for the correct uh, bore distance there. So basically you draw a triangle between the two. You know that your height is not gonna change of the triangle, but you know the hypotenuse will. Uh, so I basically just plotted a line straight down to where we need to be here. Uh, we don't actually know this distance, so this is the distance we're gonna figure out. Um, and really that distance is the difference between the old side here to the new one. So basically, uh, no, you know two sides of the triangle at all times. So you actually know three sides of your first triangle, but because we're gonna be reusing this number here, we'll, uh, we'll use the hypotenuse and this to calculate this distance. So we had 107.91. After we extend the radius by two and a half, that math comes out to 110.65. So that means our hole is actually going to move in our x-axis, which our x-axis is perpendicular to, you know, the parting line here. That's the only direction we can move in. Uh, we'll be moving that 2.74 millimeters, and that will gain us, a, that will add two and a half millimeters to our rod length. I have this rod squared up in the vise. I've wiped an indicator across these faces here, so this, so these faces where the cap fits are now parallel to the table, and I've dropped an end mill down and just touched it. So now this is locked in at the height of the current rod. Now what I'm gonna do is drop the table 2.74 millimeters. And then I'm going to actually take the vise off the table without touching the rod, take it over to the welding station, weld it, and then bring it back, bolt it down and make these cuts. And that way I should be pretty much perfect because there's really nothing for me to reference here once I weld this. I'm gonna be filling this bearing surface with weld and I'm going to be welding on these faces here. So I'm actually nervous right now. If you think that looks like a disaster, you're not far off. But this was the plan. So let's machine it, see if I got enough weld build up on it. Thread these in and then see what it takes to make our cap fit. We got a little ways to go on that. It's gonna work guys. I know it looks horrible, but give me a, give me a chance here. Give me a chance to clean this up. I actually had an M7 tap, which is crazy. So I'm just chasing these. I know this is ugly and just disgusting and looks terrible, but trust me. This will come together in a little bit here. Just, you gotta see it, you gotta see the big picture here. Basically what I just did here was created shim material on the rod. I chose to weld because I could then machine these lips in, which interlock the cap here. And that's important because these bolts really aren't there to center the rod cap. They're just there to hold it together. So now we have essentially taken the center line of this hole and moved it this way. Now, there's gonna be some work 
you know, obviously I got to bore this and champ for this and probably do some weld filling on the back, but that right there effectively has lengthened our rod. You can see where the original rod surface is here. And then we are now, our rod cap surface is 2.74 millimeters north of that. So I just skim cut the top of the rod cap. I also made these grooves over here deeper. The intent of that is to, you know, if I would have left that, that would mean that the center line here to this would be a perfect 20 millimeters. And I wanna make one continuous bore around here. The chances of me centering up on this perfectly are slim to none. I don't want an interrupted cut. So I decided to drop this cap just a smidge. I don't know. See where we're getting here? It's starting to look like a rod. Now, <laughs> I know we got a while to go. Stick with me. I found center of the wrist pin here. Came down our calculated dimensions. Overlaid the factory rod just because I don't trust myself. And we're ready to make our first cut now that I didn't add enough weld. So I think we're going to be doing this twice. But that's okay. Once I get a nice radius cut in here, I should be able to center up on it pretty good then uh, until we sneak up on our final number. We're back after welding. Let's see if we're in the ballpark here. Right now, I'm just bringing the the new welds down to match the old diameter. And I'm just creeping up because I know I'm close. We're not there yet on size. We might make it here. We got one part of the rod that's a little hairy, but the rest really cleaned up good. Alright, so I finished my final bore. It actually looks pretty good. You see this stuff here, this looks gross. This is going away. So remember that this side of the rod gets this chamfer here. So I'm going to be grinding a custom tool on a fly cutter to hopefully replicate this chamfer and cut that in there. So that's a plan that actually came together. Look at that chamfer. Better than the factory cast chamfer. That looks awesome. So we did end up with a little low spot here on the bearing, but it's right at the edge. I'm not worried about it. I got to flip the rod, do some machining on the back, but I think we're there. All right, so now I'm going to take a die grinder. I'm going to clean the weld out of these, you know, kind of braces here. I don't think they're actually functional. I don't think they do anything. Otherwise, man, that's not a bad looking rod. Right here it is compared to its partner straight out of China. This is straight out of Pennsylvania. And you can see here that we have acquired our difference in length. That's two and a half millimeters. I know it doesn't look like much, but that's what it takes. So I left this thing two tenths of a millimeter tight. And we are going to hone this two tenths of a mil out. I could have went closer with the boring bar because I was getting a really nice surface finish towards the end, but I didn't want to risk it, you know, picking up a little chatter and then being too big and there's no way to go back. So I'm going to use this cute little hone here. All right, so stock rod. Coming out 3997, 3997. Spanky rod, 39, 39.97, 39, 39.97. This is how these go together in the engine, machine face to machine face, chamfer face, 
outside to the chamfer on the crankshaft. So, you know, if you had to be picky, if you take a look in here, I've got some pitting, a little bit of pitting. And here we just have a tiny little low spot at the edge and tiny, yeah, just a tiny little low spot. And then you've got some cosmetic flaws here. But otherwise, this is a 100% functional connecting rod. I'm rebuilding a trencher to cut trenches. You're gonna see a video on that coming up soon. And it had a blown up Honda GX610 on it. And I bought all these parts, booked a trip. You know, I'm taking this trencher seven hours from home to go do 300 feet of trench. I've got utilities lined up, pipes, wires, the whole deal. I need this piece of equipment and I don't have the right connecting rod for it. So here I am, uh, it's a Thursday night. I'm supposed to leave on Sunday or Monday and it's 11 o'clock at night and I have to make a connecting rod. And this turned out awesome. This is gonna do its job. I have 100% confidence that this rod is gonna hold up just as good as the OEM one does. Here's the other OEM one, right? There's no putting this one back together. So we had to work with what we got, it turned out awesome. You know, it's good to challenge yourself like this sometimes. I, I struck out, the first night I pulled these out of the box, I built the engine, I was like, what the hell? The pistons aren't coming up the top dead center like I would expect. Pulled the stock rod out, the one that was remaining, took some measurements, said, oh crap, this thing is too short. I cannot order these from Honda in time. I'm gonna have to abort this whole trip. That would be a disaster. I have to come up with a solution. So it's good to challenge yourself. You know, I put some thought into this. I said, all right, let's 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 extend this rod somehow. And then, you know, the whole offset rod cap really made the geometry complicated. If this was a straight rod cap right off the bottom, like most cars are, I probably could have did this in like two hours. This ended up taking me six hours to make this rod, but it's dimensionally perfect and it's dimensionally identical to the OEM Honda rod. So. Can't say it's a good use of my time, but what I can say is if we have uncertain times coming in the future and there's more part shortages and there's more stuff just hitting the fan, it's really good to be able to do stuff like this. You're gonna have to get crafty with things if things keep going the way they are. So I like to push myself. I like to challenge myself a little bit. I've never done anything like this, but now I have. And now we're on to the next. Thanks for watching Spank Ranch Garage. I'll see you next time.